One of the most frustrating things a player can experience in Valorant is whiffing. Whether you're whiffing when nobody is watching or while your whole team is spectating you, we all know how terrible it feels to whiff the easiest kill imaginable. Everyone whiffs, even your favorite pro players whiff. We've all been there, but for some of us, why does it feel like we whiff far more often than everybody else? This is something I've actually struggled with quite a bit in the past, and in this video I'm going to be sharing with you everything I learned from studying pro players that will help you figure out not only why you whiff, but how to stop whiffing. To do this, we'll be taking a look at a match from one of our site subscribers, Dr. Sigma Fruit, and answering the question that he had for us in this VOD, why do I lose a lot of easy gunfights that I should be winning? And Dr. Sigma actually touches on a really good point in regards to whiffing. As we mentioned, it's completely natural. Some fights are going to be really difficult to win, and because of that, it's going to make you feel like you are whiffing, when in reality, it was just a very difficult shot to land in the first place. Personally, for me, I wouldn't really call this a whiff. It's just a difficult shot to land. However, these aren't the fights you're really looking to fix. What about the ones where you make all of the right decisions, but still can't manage to close out the round. Let's dig into this a little bit more by looking into Dr. Sigma's match and taking a look at some of his fights. First, we need to establish what is and what isn't an easy fight. Now listen up, because this is really important for you to understand if you want to improve as fast as possible. We're looking at Dr. Sigma in this match, but you can apply this to your own gameplay if you understand it well enough, so stick with us. First, let's look at this fight in showers. This round starts with our Viper scaling up and getting flash peaked by the enemy Yoru and Raze. This is an impossible shot to land. The reason it's so difficult is because he's forced to turn this flash or just spray and hope to connect, which is both very unlikely. That's why utility is so effective for forcing favorable engagements, because there's not really anything these players can do to avoid this flash. Their options are turn it or get full blinded, and neither of these are really great. You'll actually notice how obnoxious these flashes are at first, making it incredibly difficult for our Viper player to take any space in showers. Because of this, our Viper strategically backs off, resets, and starts to slowly re-engage. At this point, he doesn't really have any option but to fall back, given how many flashes are being thrown. If he stays in place, it's very likely that the defenders will aggress towards him and overwhelm him. Oftentimes, taking a moment to reset is the best thing that you can do to ensure that you won't whiff. Even better, after resetting, our Sova regroups and helps us push up and try to even out the score. However, the flashes are still coming, and now Sova is going to get taken out as well. Luckily, Viper is able to close the gap onto Phoenix, who is stuck against the wall and reloading after the Sova kill, to at least salvage something for her team from this horrible start to the game. This fight with the Phoenix is one she should win. He's reloading, and he's pinned against the wall. And if you don't know, being close to walls is generally going to be pretty bad, because you can only strafe towards one direction to escape fire, limiting your options. If you've ever played a game like League of Legends, this is the same concept that players will use to land skill shots easily when players tend to run against a wall. It just gives them less room to juke and avoid fire, making it much easier to land your shots. We don't have skill shots in Valorant, but it functions in the same way. If a player is stuck up against a wall or hiding in corners, you should normally have the upper hand when taking an engagement versus them. This was an easy fight, and our Viper won it, but her team is a bit behind in the round now. The topic of this video is how to win an easy gunfight, but let's talk Talk about what's happened so far. Dr. Sigma tried to aggress into showers, but he got shoved back by three players just barraging his team with flashes and traded two for the price of one. That is pretty bad. So was there actually zero counterplay here? Is it just impossible to win versus a team that is chucking flashes down showers? And should you be doing this on defense? Well, not exactly. Let's take a look at what the defenders invested into this round. They had three players who were planning to fight showers, so they already have the upper hand because they know that they're looking for a fight. On top of that, they've invested a Yoru Flash, a Yoru Decoy, and two Phoenix Flashes into fighting this. Now, when you compare this to what our attackers used to take showers, well, let's be generous and say that they had three players invested into taking showers, even though they didn't really all fight at the same time. Aside from that, though, they didn't really use any utility, and they also didn't seem prepared for any fights to take place here. While in some games it might be okay to just walk up into areas like this, the reality is, as you can see, if the defenders fight this, you're really going to struggle to fight back if you don't take any sort of safety measures to prevent this. So what could the attackers have done to ensure easier fights here? Well, for starters, our Viper player, instead of purchasing her Poison Orb, could have taken a Snake Bite and used it to prevent the Flash Swing at the start. This one Molly would give her team the time that they need to scale up into a better position, allowing them to take it more safely. Or, instead of 
of our Sova shooting a recon back site when nobody is in position to get any value out of it, he could have used it to help us get info in showers so that we at least know if they intend to fight it or not. Because if he shoots the recon in showers, we can at least know that somebody is there and we can use that utility to fight that player back. Pretty much every agent in the game has their own ways of scaling up safely that they could implement. Sage can use their slow orbs, Yoru can flash, Breach can stun, Omen can blind, and while some of these ways are better than others, it doesn't mean that there's nothing that you can do. Our Viper won his easy gunfight right here, but it really didn't matter because his team was forced into two difficult gunfights before that they ended up losing. Difficult gunfights don't just come from utility though. Later on in this round, you'll see another difficult gunfight that this Viper ends up taking. You'll notice after his team dies in showers, Dr. Sigma is going to rotate back towards short, and while approaching a fight in U-Haul, ends up getting killed by the enemy Yoru. I'm not actually entirely sure how the average player would think about this gunfight. Perhaps some of you think that this is an easy gunfight because no utility was used and he's relatively close to the Yoru. But the reality is, his crosshair wasn't ready to take this fight at all. He's aiming towards U-Haul rather than closing in on the Yoru's last known location. There's a reason crosshair placement is so important. Flicks like this will never come easy, even when you approach a Mortal or Radiant. Pretty much the whole game of Valorant is crosshair placement, and while this may be an extreme example, if you're ever going to blame a death on whiffing, you have to be pretty damn sure that your crosshair placement was perfect approaching the fight. In this player's case though, his crosshair placement is actually only so poor because of the way he approached the angle. Notice how if you look at the map, you'll see that the Yoru is in the corner from the start, but our Viper is aiming into U-Haul anyway, likely anticipating that the Yoru entered U-Haul after that last fight. However, there's a way that he could have avoided this sort of confusion. If our Viper is approaching U-Haul by hugging this wall by the teleporter, he's limiting his vision drastically. Notice how much further I have to travel to see the entrance of U-Haul by running forward like this, rather than if I started to strafe out towards my right. This might not seem like a big deal, but by denying the Yoru the ability to enter U-Haul without our knowledge, we can easily confirm that he has to be in this corner. This is actually a really common tactic that higher level players will use to limit the options of their opponents during each match. A good example of this would be on Ascent A site. Say for example, the door is shut and the enemy is planting the spike near generator, but you're currently in heaven. If you just hide while the player is planting the spike and give them the time afterwards to reposition, they can go anywhere. They can go towards A main, they can go hell, they can still be generator, they can be dice, they can be by door. However, what if we walk out heaven? While it might seem a bit riskier, this actually means that the opponent's options are much more limited. They cannot go A main, they cannot go hell, they are stuck generator. By limiting your opponent's options to reposition, you can make your fights much easier because you know exactly where to place your crosshair. In this case, if our Viper player cut off this Yoru's escape into U-Haul, they could easily know that Yoru is stuck in the corner, and just as we said for the Phoenix, this should favor the Viper due to his limited mobility. This concept can be quite difficult to catch on your own though, which is exactly why we've taken the chance to look through countless examples of our viewers' VODs to help them out, just like this one. What we recommend first for players is that you head on over to our site and check out all of the the courses that we have related to mechanics to make sure that you are doing everything in your power to have as much of a fighting chance in your gunfights as possible. Then after you've learned all of the fundamentals behind aiming and movement in Valorant, you should head on over to our Discord and request a VOD review from one of our Radiant coaches in the Discord. With our site subscription, you can get access to one free VOD review a month where you get to connect with a top level player who will serve as your guide on your road to Immortal. So for the low price of $7.99, you can get a VOD review every month and access some of the best courses on the internet for not only improving at Valorant, but also League of Legends and World of Warcraft as well. On top of all of this, we also offer a rank improvement guarantee, so if you don't end up climbing while using our service, you'll get your money back, no questions asked. In fact, it looks like Dr. Sigma jumped up three whole divisions shortly after this coaching session, peaking at Ascendant 2 at the time of writing this video. We'll talk more about that at the end of the video, but let's do a quick recap of what we've seen so far from Dr. Sigma. So in this first round, we have a bunch of fights taken, but really only one of them ended up being an easy fight, and he won it. However, we did cover some ways that he could make each fight quite a bit easier. Let's take a look at some other examples of easy fights though in this game. For this next one, our Viper is looking to fight Hookup and uses their wall to assist their team on site. Our jet locates the enemy sky's location for us and quickly dashes away. She does smoke off the entrance, giving the sky the opportunity to reposition. However, because sky reloaded, we're still pretty sure that she's on the right side. Because of this, you'll see Dr. Sigma keeps his crosshair placed on the right and suddenly the enemy sky swings the angle. A little past his crosshair, but we were able to 
correct and land the kill. I wouldn't say this is the easiest kill in the world, considering that the wide swing isn't exactly expected. However, there wasn't any utility used on either side, and the sky is using a specter, so we should at least have the gun advantage in this case. As the round progresses, though, we rotate back over towards short, and right before we swing the corner, the enemy Yoru tries to pick up a kill onto our jet after performing a bit of trigger discipline. However, he ends up whiffing his first few shots, and our Viper player swings the angle and takes him out. Once again, this Yoru is kind of in a corner, and he's also elevated, so he can't exactly drop down accurately, so our Viper should have the advantage on the swing, especially considering Yoru was just shooting at her teammate, so his recoil isn't going to be perfect right now. And what do you know, our Viper picks up another kill, and shortly after, plants the spike and wins the round. In this round, our Viper took two relatively easy fights and won both of them. We're going to keep going, but kind of the point that we're going to make is that these easy fights that you're whiffing on are actually frequently a lot less easy than you think. Remember that fight that we mentioned earlier with the sky? Take a look at a similar fight in the exact same location in the very next round. Our Viper's walking up towards Hookah, but just as we mentioned in the showers push, they're not really looking like they're going to use any utility to take it. Because of this, when our Viper swings the enemy brimstone, it's kind of just a straight up gunfight. Sure, he has a sheriff and we have a phantom, but it's still only going to take one good shot to kill us. We might technically still have the advantage since we have a phantom, but without using any utility, it's not going to be by much. Now I know what most of you are thinking already. How is Viper? going to use her utility to take hookah? The answer is not very easily. Some areas of the map are more difficult to take for different agents, and our team comp isn't exactly the best one for buying. There are some really crazy ways I could recommend maybe approaching this. Perhaps you can smoke off the entrance to cross towards the other side first if you're really afraid about these early angles. Then to scale up easier, you could either molly either side, again if you really had to. But optimally, you don't really want to be leading the charge into hookah anyway. So while yeah, this fight might feel easy since the brimstone had a worse gun, it still wasn't like we used any utility to take control of the area, which as we saw in showers, very frequently doesn't work out well. From long, Viper can molly off the swing or molly off the left side if she has to. She can also wall elbow or even smoke spawn with her poison orb. Losing to a sheriff sucks, I get it. But if I'm Viper, I didn't even want to go into hookah in the first place. What am I going to do if they have a judge in there? Just take a 50-50? Like, that sounds horrible. In this case, say that I'm Viper and I absolutely have to go into hookah. What I'm going to do is wait for my teammates to get out onto site from long first, and then I will enter hookah late while the brimstone is being collapsed on. You could perform this same tactic in showers if you ever notice three players pushing you like in the pistol round. Otherwise, you're going to be forcing yourself into an unfavorable gunfight. There are a number of different questions you need to ask yourself if you're going to determine if a gunfight is easy. As we covered, did you use any utility to make the fight easier? Was your crosshair placement good before the fight? Was the enemy fighting one of your teammates? Was the enemy's movement limited? Did the fight favor your weapon? If the answer to any of these questions is no, then it's possible that the fight that you were taking wasn't as easy as you thought it was. Because a fight that is truly easy is one that is going to be near impossible for you to lose. And while this does happen, the fights that many of these players are complaining about don't even look remotely similar to the fights that you'll see from a pro player. In fact, if you want a real example of what an easy fight is, let's take a look at the difference between how this diamond player took fights versus how a radiant player takes fights. Take a look at this round from Nats. Same agent, same map, just a different rank. Notice how when Nats scales up short, he's using a sky wolf along with his viper wall to make it much safer. If you compare this to any rounds from our diamond viper scaling up, whether it was showers or hookah, not only is Nats faster with a scaling, but he's also infinitely safer. Then, before swinging U-Haul, he requests that his sky flashes for him and mollies as well. That's four pieces of utility used to scale up short, compared to our first Viper, who essentially only used his wall. Many players may be afraid to invest so much utility into accomplishing just one task, but you'll notice in this round, by the time the Nats has used both of his mollies, his team has secured U-Haul and showers and is now in a 4v2. This round is effectively over, barring no stupid plays from his team, which is exactly why you should use your utility to take control of the map safer, because otherwise you might not live long enough to use it at all. Notice how we focused on a round where Nats basically sent it up short though, rather than one where he made his way towards hookah or showers. The reason for this is, as you'll see, Nats didn't really go towards showers or hookah at all during this game. Similar to what we were talking about with Dr. Sigma, Viper's strengths on bind are mostly present when she's pressuring on short, rather than when she's pushing anywhere else on the map. So well, yeah, you maybe could find ways to work other parts of the map, Nats knows that he is going to find more favorable gunfights fighting around the area that Viper is best in. Take a look at this next round as Nats once again makes his way up short with the Sky Wolf and his wall. He follows along the right side of the wall and enters the enemy Brim Smoke with his shorty out, so if anyone is playing on the lower half of the smoke, he can easily land a kill. After 
After taking short control though, Nats once again calls for a flash from the sky and jumps out of the smoke to land a kill on an enemy out in the open. You'd think finding easy fights might involve playing slower, but as you're seeing from Nats' gameplay, it actually is a lot more about combining your utility with teammates to make your fights safer. 13 seconds into the round and Nats has already made an entry onto A site as Viper, and it's not as if this was the most difficult kill for him either. Sure, this requires a bit of teamwork, but the player who submitted this VOD was Diamond 2. Everyone's optimal dream is that they'll be able to have perfect teammates every game and people will just play around you without having to say anything. But the reality is, if you want to play at the top level of players, you're going to have to play like a top level of player. We all feel a little bit emo sometimes and don't want to talk to our teammates, but it's a team game and if you can't muster up the courage to request a flash, you're going to have a tough time climbing past Ascendant. Even just the normal things that you'll see Nats do on his own are already levels above what our other Viper player was doing. Take a look at this molly he throws to take showers control, similar to what we were suggesting with Dr. Sigma. This lineup bounces off the top of the building and falls through the window in the roof of showers, preventing any of the defenders from swinging. Although Nats doesn't end up using this molly to take showers control himself, this creates pressure and will deny the defenders shower control out of the gate. If he were to take showers, he wouldn't even need to worry about that same flash play from the first VOD happening, because they'd have to push through a Viper molly, which would be absolutely crazy. I was just going to suggest that our Viper player bounces his molly off of the wall, but if he's really looking to master Viper, this is probably something he should look into. I wouldn't just look into a molly for showers though, I'd probably find something he's comfortable doing for long and hookah as well. On long, I know you can bounce the molly off of the wall and it will cover the choke point for octagon, which is nice as well. This at least gives him some tools to scale up safely. This is especially important in areas like long because flash agents love to pop flash as you're scaling up, so you can prevent them from doing that safely every time if you push B. Remember, just because Viper doesn't have any info abilities or flashes, doesn't mean that she's not supposed to use anything to help her team scale up. Her smokes protect everyone on her team, which our diamond player is using fine, but her mollies also prevent players from swinging you as you're running forward, which is something he's definitely not taking advantage of. Basically what I'm trying to say is that the difference between a diamond player and Nats is that the kills that the diamond player are whiffing on are at best like a 60-40, meaning that he only really has a slight advantage in them. If you don't want to whiff on easy kills, you need to use your abilities to at the very least make them an 80-20. That way, when you have a death like this one, you at least know that the Yoru just landed a nasty shot and it's not like you massively misplayed the round. This is also incredibly important because if your engagement was an 80-20, it likely means that you did everything in your power to make sure that that was as good a fight as you could take. The reality that we discussed at the start of this video is that everyone whiffs. It's not something you could stop doing, and if you really want to stop whiffing, the best way to do that is going to be booting up some aim training, as well as practicing in deathmatch, just as we suggested in our aim god to 30 days video. But even then, there's never an 100% chance that you're going to win an engagement. We've all been one-tapped by that guy who's been breech ulted into the air. Sometimes Valorant just chooses you to die that day. But by doing everything in your power to put yourself in positions where the fights favor you, you can minimize the amount of times that you whiff, which is really what the game is about. And that's something that we can help you with. Over at Skillcapped, we've been hard at work updating the site with some of the most premium courses that you will find on the internet that will take you from 0 to 100 in Valorant in just a few weeks. If you're really looking to stop whiffing, we recommend checking out our Become an Aim God course that will teach you everything that there is to know about aiming and dive straight into the root of what it means to be a good aimer, and how you can minimize all of the errors in your aim that will cause you to win those actually unlosable gunfights. We'll take those 80-20s that you will rarely lose and turn them into 95% odds that you will win, making you an unstoppable freight train in all of your matches. The best part about having good aim in Valorant is that you can even turn some unfavorable engagements into favorable ones simply because you have better aim. Even more incredible, you can get coached directly by our Radiant staff in the Skillcap Discord, and they'll give you pointers on everything that you need to fix in your own gameplay to rank up. The students we're coaching are constantly hitting new peaks every single day, and if you don't believe us, you can go read the testimonials in our Discord. People love the service that we're providing, and the demand is increasing, so don't wait up. Check out Skillcap today, and we'll see you there.